OK, in this short video, we're going to see how we can model the initial prior density in n-object tracking. So what we need is a prior density for the n-objects, a prior at time 0 for the object states x1, x2, and all the way to xn. And uh, we're going to model this initial prior using an independence assumption. So we need to quickly remind ourselves of what independent random variables mean. If we have n random variables, xi, then they're independent if their joint density factorizes, meaning that we can describe the joint density as a product of densities for each individual variable, just like we've done here. A typical assumption in object tracking is that initially the object states are independent. And as we have discussed earlier in this course, Multiple object tracking requires assumed density filtering. So we need to assume some density type for the object states using this initial prior. And as we've also mentioned earlier in the course, Gaussian densities is a very common assumption. So if we assume Gaussian densities, then the initial prior at time zero is a product of Gaussian densities with some mean vectors mu i and covariance matrices pi. Somewhat less common in practice is to have an initial prior that is a mixture density, like we see here. Uh, you should note that in this case, for each mixture component, the objects are independent. And again, given that we have assumed density filtering, or requires so in MOT, if we, for example, assume Gaussian densities, then the initial prior would be a weighted mixture of independent Gaussians for each object. OK, so that's how the initial prior density typically is modeled in n-object tracking. We assume that the initial density is independent.